Except snow. We oh. don't know snow, but we do have great, gorgeous mornings. We have warm afternoons. We even have rain that's in the forecast for later this weekend. 57 degrees in Chattanooga, 52 in Cleveland, 49 in Murphy, and 52 in Blue Ridge. Uh, we're going to get up to 81 later today. That's going to be our high, absolutely gorgeous weather all day long, and that's the way it's going to stay uh, right on through the better part of next week. We'll have highs today in the low 80s in the valley, upper 70s in the mountains. More on that potential for rain could be heavy at times coming up in just a few minutes. All right, David, thank you. Well, it's a new reality for those waking up in Las Vegas this morning after 59 people were killed and more than 500 hurt in a shooting on the Las Vegas Strip. The attack was carried out, police say, by a lone gunman firing on a concert crowd with fully automatic weapons from his hotel suite on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Hotel and Casino. Channel 3's Michelle Heron joins us live with the latest on the investigation and what happened at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Michelle. Well, guys, you know, from the World uh, One World Trade Center to the Empire State Building, also in Nashville, there are vigils in just different ways that the uh, nation has paused to just remember all of these victims. And as the community continues to mourn, the investigation continues. We're learning more about the shooter in this situation. 64 year old Stephen Paddock in the arsenal he had stored away inside of his hotel suite and his home about 80 miles northeast of of Las Vegas. Now overnight we learned investigators recovered 23 firearms from Mandalay Bay and more than a dozen of those were assault style rifles and sniper rifles with scopes and tripods. Police also found 19 firearms in his home in Mesquite. We're also hearing more from those caught in the massacre like Thomas Gunderson who was shot in the leg. I went down and immediately just saw blood everywhere. Uh, everything was kind of numb. Now, agents with the F, uh, FBI, ATF, and Homeland Security are all part of the ongoing investigation. And also, we're learning overnight that deputies seized several pounds of ammonium nitrate. That's something used in explosives inside of Paddock's car. We'll keep you guys updated. And coming up on our next half hour, we'll learn a little bit more about how folks are remembering and honoring these victims. We'll have that coming up at 630. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. Well, security is a top priority for events like the Route 91 Harvest Festival. It also plays a major role in planning and organizing music festivals in the Tennessee Valley. Officials locally are now taking a closer look at the security measures that they have in place. Channel 3's Tim Pham has been following this story. He tells us how the Las Vegas tragedy could impact upcoming shows for the friends of the festival. Tim, what have you learned? Well, John Laurie, this morning we're learning about a local connection to that tragedy in Las Vegas. We're learning that the Riverbend Friends of the Festival actually has a close tie with part of the production crew that works for Jason Aldean. We're told that they were actually on stage in Las Vegas when this all unfolded, and they've actually worked here in Chattanooga in the scenic city for the Riverbend Festival for several years. We spoke with uh, uh, Joe Dixie Fuller, who's the production director of Riverbend and he tells us that uh, he confirmed it that those crew members are okay but they're a little shaken up about what happened he says safety is a concern for organizers of every festival around the country one he says crews are working hard to prevent here in Chattanooga uh, though the next festival isn't until several months away, he says the Riverbend safety and security team continues to meet throughout the year. Fuller says what happened in Las Vegas is something they'll take into consideration. You've got to understand, we really work hard at making that a safe place. I mean, we spend a lot of hours of what could possibly happen, what really outside the box could happen, and how do we defuse that situation. Well, Fuller says whenever you're at an event, it's best to never let your guard down. Always know where your exits are and be aware of your surroundings so you can act fast if needed. Well, coming up in our next half hour, we'll take a look at some of the security measures in place at Riverbend already and what plans they have for the future. For now, reporting live in Chattanooga, Tim Pham, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Tim Pham, thank you for that. We'll check back in with you soon. And now we want to talk about the weather. It's yes. been really nice. Really nice. Maybe we have some rain on the way. Uh, the mornings are looking great. Afternoons warm and dry. And Lori, you get the million dollars. Yes, rain yes. this weekend. Uh, you get nothing, John. I just, but nope. my name, mm -hmm. 
57 uh, Chattanooga, 50 in <laughs> Cleveland, 48 in Murphy, North Carolina. It's metaphorical dollars, by the way. Uh, 52 in Blue Ridge, and we are looking good this morning. This afternoon, not going to be too bad either. We'll get up to 81 in Chattanooga, 77 in Altamont, 78 in Murphy. Uh, 81 today, 82 tomorrow, 81 Thursday. The average high is 78. We'll stay above that. And yes, we are looking at rain moving in, and that rain could be heavy at times. Some of the model data showing more than two inches of rain this weekend. Wow. We'll have all the details wow. on that coming up in just a moment. We could use it. David, thank you for that. Checking on traffic quickly now. Not a whole lot going on. This is 75 at Ringgold Road. No accidents to report. Of course, if anything changes, we'll let you know right here on Channel 3. And it's five minutes after six o'clock. Let's go ahead and check your sports headlines with Jill Jelnick, who has details about the Chattanooga Mocs new head coach. After being an assistant coach for 20 years, Lamont Paris had been waiting for this day for a very long time. Monday, UTC held their first official practice of the season and Coach Paris's first practice as a head coach of any program. He prides himself on the relationships he builds with his players and the team already seems to feel the same. I would just say loving, honestly, loving in, in, un, unconditionally. And that's that's a big that's that's been big for me, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of time wavering it can it can it can mess with your play. But I feel like when, when you have a coach that's that you feel like is always in your corner, that's that's the best thing you can have. There's a lot of different ways to care for people. Sometimes it takes tough love and sometimes it's putting my arm around them and uh, but I think they've responded to both of those and no matter how you slice it, I think they can tell that I I care about them a lot. Now, when you inherit a new team, of course, you got to get some new unis. Junior Nat Dixon and sophomore Rodney Chapman took a little time to show off the Mock's new home and away jerseys. UTC returns four players from last year, but no starters and no seniors. The first game on the schedule is an ex exhibition game November 4th against Francis Marion. Now the men weren't the only ones hitting the hardwood yesterday. The Lady Mox basketball team held their first official practice yesterday afternoon. Similar to the men, the women have a relatively young team as well with five freshmen and one new transfer. But the Lady Mox do return the Gilbert senior sisters, Ariana and Kiana Gilbert, two of the main leaders on this Lady Mox team. I think like being a senior this year with five new freshmen coming in, that uh, me and my sister have to play a bigger role. But I think that the freshmen are pretty well like adjusting and stuff, so I think we'll be fine. Those two have had, they've been very consistent. They've had great practices. They show up every day, and uh, I think they're doing a great job of uh, leading by example, and I think they're also more vocal and verbal than they have been. The Lady Mox will open up the season on the road in Green Bay November 11th before they host UCF for their first home game November 13th. All right, that's it for sports. I'm Jill Jelnick. I hope you have a terrific Tuesday. All right, all right. 608 coming up on Eyewitness News today. Now, weeks after that devastating earthquake rocked Mexico City, the death toll is continuing to rise. We'll have details on the recovery efforts when we come back.
with coverage you can count on. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News Today. The lights of the Eiffel Tower, the iconic landmark in the French capital, were switched off at midnight local time last night. And in homage to the victims of two tragedies, this weekend the knife attack in the French port city of Marseille and the mass shooting in Las Vegas. Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo tweeted earlier yesterday saying in part tonight we turn off the lights of the Eiffel Tower to honor the victims of the two attacks, continuing a practice of bowing in respect to victims of horror. The two women accused of killing the half brother of North Korea's leader Kim Jong Un have arrived for day two of their trial in Malaysia. The women have entered pleas of not guilty nearly eight months after that brazen airport assassination. They could face the death penalty if convicted. They are suspected of smearing Kim Jong Nam's face with the banned VX nerve agent back on February 13th at a crowded airport terminal, killing him within 20 minutes. They are the only suspects arrested in what has been alleged as an assassination plot by North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. Weeks after a devastating earthquake in Mexico City, the death toll continues to rise. Mexico's civil defense coordinator announced via Twitter that the death toll from the recent magnitude 7.1 earthquake had risen to 363, including 222 in Mexico City. Now, most of the rubble has been cleared away from the 38 sites where buildings collapsed in the capital, leaving only a few active recovery efforts. Coming up on Eyewitness News today, we'll check back in with David Carnes. He'll have a look at the seven-day forecast. Plus, we're going to let you know if there are any problems on your Tuesday morning commute. Stay with us. Channel 3 Eyewitness News traffic sponsored by CHI Memorial's Chattanooga Heart Institute. Taver is the first of its kind technology for heart valve replacement without major surgery. Now that's revolutionary. Visit ChattanoogaHeart.com. Good Tuesday morning, everyone. If you're getting up and about this morning, things should be looking pretty good for you out on the interstates and your state routes. No reports of any accidents on our SmartWay network. In fact, that's a live picture right there. 75 at Volkswagen. Things moving smoothly. Both uh, Chattanooga Airport and Nashville Airport. Everything is on time, so it should be smooth sailing. All right, David Carn, speaking of smooth, what's this forecast looking like? Hey, John, looking uh, very warm for the next several days. We're going to have above average temperatures. We want the cooler air, my goodness, head out west about 20 degrees below average uh, while we are looking at temperatures uh, about 20 degrees above average for part of the eastern United States. Not quite as dramatic for the Tennessee Valley. It'll just be a few degrees above average here in our area. Back to that cold weather, uh, just to let you know, freezing temperatures, possibly record-breaking temperatures likely across the 
the northern plains and parts of the Midwest. For us, the sun returns. It's going to be warming up as we move through the week, low to mid 80s. And then this weekend, some rain showers, heavy rain at times expected. More on that in a moment. Holiday in downtown camera. Uh, we're looking good so far. Absolutely clear skies. No problems with fog out there and very comfortable temperatures with the low humidity. We're able to get down to 50 in Cleveland, 57 Chattanooga, 50 in Murphy, 51 Blue Ridge, a little bit warmer in Dalton, 61 degrees for you and 59 up on the plateau. Uh, Viper cast showing a big ridge of high pressure just dominating the Tennessee Valley and really again the eastern United States for the next several days right through Thursday. No big changes in our forecast. Uh, cooler, comfortable mornings, very dry and then warm and pleasant afternoons with highs in the low 80s and lots of sunshine. A little more humid heading into Friday with a high of 85 and then you're going to see some moisture getting drawn up. This is uh, associated with an area of low pressure that we've been watching for a slight chance of development into a tropical system. But for our purposes, the main impact is going to be a front to our west, drawing a lot of moisture up and producing some rain showers for Saturday. Some of that rain is going to be heavy at times, particularly on Sunday, Sunday afternoon into Sunday night. We could see some heavy rain and some of that rain could linger on into Monday. So uh, basically Saturday night through Sunday and into Monday morning, we could get some pretty good rainfall, more than two inches of rain in some spots around the Tennessee Valley. Again, that this weekend. 81 degrees to the high today. 82 Cleveland will be in the upper 70s and the higher elevations. Very comfortable again as we start the day tomorrow. We'll be in the low to mid 50s from most spots and a little bit cooler up toward Murphy. Blue Ridge in the upper 40. So no changes through Thursday. Lots of sun, comfortable but warm temperatures. So temperature will be about oh, 03, 4, 5 degrees above average. And then we climb up to 85 Friday. The humidity builds and rain showers move in, particularly Saturday night through Sunday into Monday morning. More than two inches of rain a possibility. Mm. With all this nice weather, though, it's it's a good time to start thinking about all things fall, like Definitely. picking pumpkins. That, what a segue that is. Yes, fall is officially here. And yes, that does mean it's pumpkin picking season. And we're going to turn to Channel 3's uh, meteorologist Brittany Beggs. She's going to explain why this is such a great harvest year and what you can do to uh, make pumpkins last longer this season. <laughs> well, it is that time, and I'm at the Mayfield Pumpkin Patch and Corn Maze. The rain that we had in June and July made for a great harvest this year. They tell me a couple of tricks you can do to make your pumpkin last a little bit longer this season. First, look for pumpkins that aren't sunburned. Pumpkins that yeah. still have their leaves will continue to provide some shade and protection. The leaves go away, so it's just sitting there in the beaten sun, but it started doing that six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. It's just going to kind of melt it over time if you're not careful. Michael Mayfield, owner of Mayfield Farms, advises looking for soft spots when selecting a pumpkin. And when you plan to carve it, start at the bottom, not the top. Get everything out, carve your, you know, your jack o' lantern face or whatever that is. Carving the opening at the bottom prevents the top from collapsing first. It will slowly sink from the bottom. If the traditional jack-o'-lantern isn't your thing and you prefer the oddball white, green, warty pumpkins. If you'll take a spoon or something and, and, and kind of maybe thin from the inside the walls and make it not paper thin, but if you can thin it down a little bit, put a candle in it, they glow. Mayfield says they accidentally found this out when experimenting with white pumpkins and squash. They also harvested slightly different than previous years this time. Well, notice the pumpkin size. It's a little bit different this year. They're larger this year. Michael tells me that when they planted, they allowed more room and more space for the pumpkins to grow a little bit larger. Reporting here at Mayfield Farms, meteorologist Brittany Beggs, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. The president and first lady head to Puerto Rico today to see firsthand the damage that two hurricanes left on the island. The first couple are going to uh, San Juan to get a briefing on Hurricane Maria relief efforts. Hurricane Irma plunged more than a million residents into darkness and then Hurricane Maria came along to wipe out the rest of the U.S. territory. President Trump will visit people who are impacted by the storm and visit a church. Later, he will meet with governors of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, who will be in Puerto Rico today. Then on Wednesday, the president will head to Las Vegas following that deadly mass shooting. The former chairman and CEO of Equifax, Richard Smith, will testify before Congress today about that massive data breach that has now affected more than 145 million Americans. The human error and technology failures that allowed the breach to 
uh, affect more than 145 million people. Lawmakers are expected to question Smith on why it took Equifax several months to notify consumers. 620, coming up on Eyewitness News Today. In the wake of yesterday's mass shooting in Las Vegas, a new study reveals the latest statistics on gun violence in the United States. We'll have those details after the break. ATM fees have hit another record high. Oh, That's great. according to the latest Bankrate.com checking study released today. ATM fees have hit a record high for the 11th year in a row. It says the average total cost of an out-of-network ATM withdrawal is now almost five dollars. That's wow. up more than two and a half percent from last year and up 55 percent over the past decade. The study found overdraft fees are also at a new high at an average of $33.38. It's like they don't appreciate that bailout that we uh, did for them. Hey, General Motors is driving on an all-electric path. The automaker is promising two new electric vehicles in the next year and a half based off learning learnings from the Chevrolet Bolt electric vehicle. GM says the vehicles will be the first of at least 20 new all-electric vehicles that will be launched by 2023. If you lend money to a family member, don't expect to get it all back. That's according to a new study by Lending Tree. People Truth. who lend money to their relatives only end up getting about 57% of it back. The average amount across all generations for people who reported having loaned money in their adult life is $5,022. And of that amount, an average of just under $3,000 has been repaid. But despite not getting all of their money back, just 26% of those surveyed said they would never loan money again. <laughs> 
New this morning, millions of lives could be saved if American smokers switch to e-cigarettes. That is according to a new study from Georgetown University. Researchers project smokers could gain 86 million years of life over the next 10 years by completely switching to e-cigarettes. They say the switch would also help reduce smoking-related disease and exposure to secondhand smoke. In the wake of yesterday's mass shooting in Las Vegas, a new study reveals the latest statistics on gun violence in the United States. Researchers at Johns Hopkins University looked at gun-related injuries from 2006 to 2014. About half of patients were injured during an assault, and a third were shot by accident. Gun injuries were nine times higher among males and were highest among men in their early 20s. Firearm injuries account for nearly $3 billion in medical costs each year. 626 coming up on Eyewitness News today. We'll have the very latest on that mass shooting in Las Vegas that left at least 59 people dead, plus how it could affect local security changes at public events. Stay with us. Now, the US 101 Garth Brooks Song of the Day. Hey, this is US 101's Ken Kelly and Daniel B. Listing for our US 101 Garth Brooks Song of the Day. You can win two tickets to a sold out show in Atlanta at the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Listen to Madison today from 12 to 1 for the Garth Brooks song, Ask Me How I Know. Be the third caller in to win. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News Today. Good morning, Tennessee Valley. You're watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News Today. I'm Lori Mitchell. I'm John Martin. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday morning. Just about a week or two away from some of those leaves really changing colors. I know it's fall officially, David Carnes, and that air is starting to move in to make it feel a little bit like it. Yeah, I think so. We're going to have uh, some warm weather this week and then rain over the weekend and then a nice cool down next week as we enter the peak of uh, fall colors. 57 degrees Chattanooga, 50 in Cleveland <clears throat> and 51 in Blue Ridge. Feels wonderful stepping out the door this morning. The humidity is low, mostly sunny skies all day. We'll get our highs into the low 80s. The average